looking for Brothers. He lets it fly from the long oh, it's good! For the second straight week, VCU will head into overtime. Lindsay out of control, but you can count the bucket. He finds Brothers wide open for three. It's good! The number 19 team in the country suffers its first conference loss. Circle up, Spiders. It's time for the rematch. The Rams now 21st in the country and searching for an A-10 title. This is Shaka's floor. Ready for havoc? It's time for Black and Blue, part two. Michael Jordan. They won it. Puts it up. Yes! Launches the shot. To the madness. Snow started falling in Richmond just afternoon. It's turned to rain, and now it's turning warm inside the Seagull Center for the rematch of the Richmond Spiders and the BCU Rams. Take a look at the A-10 standings. This one has all the more meaning tonight. BCU playing for a shot at the title, and Richmond playing for seating in the A-10 tournament. Hello again, everyone. Brad Johansson alongside the coach, John Griffin. This has a postseason feel tonight, doesn't it? It has all the trappings. This is March Madness, even though we haven't officially gotten into the postseason. And these two teams know each other so well. They played against each other not too long ago, and VCU is loaded for bear tonight. They are because Richmond got the first one, but tonight is senior night and an emotional night for Shaka Smart and the first guys he ever recruited here. Well, Darius Theus is a special guy. He's this emotional leader for this basketball team. Aside from being a terrific playmaker, he averages four assists for every turnover, but Shock and Smart is going to miss this guy very hard to replace. Richmond playing for a lot of different things as we take a look at their eye file. They've got some things to do tonight. Well, Chris Mooney wants his team to play under control, and he has to rely on his upperclassmen, but he's playing for an NCAA tournament bid, seating in the Atlantic 10 tournament, and an all-important and almost impossible sweep of VCU. Cedric Lindsay will lead the show, but can they keep their composure against the havoc? It is the rematch. Richmond, VCU, and it's all coming up next. Seventy five years of NCAA March Madness presented by Enterprise in 2006 11 seed Cinderella George Mason was one win away from its first trip to the final four standing in their way was top seed UConn in this overtime thriller Dana Brown for three no good by George the dream is alive go to NCAA.com slash March Madness and vote for the all time players teams and moments. The spicy popcorn chicken is so great, I right? know, my sweet potato time. Friendly reminder, it's your last chance to get a $200 Verizon Visa prepaid card with Fios Internet and Phone for Business, both with 99.9% .9 network reliability on an unparalleled fiber network for only $94.99 a month when you sign up online with a two-year term, plus a basic second line. Order at verizon.com slash mybiz or call 1-888-717-4404 for other offers. Hurry, the offer won't last long. This is a fire that didn't destroy a home. This is a break-in that didn't devastate a family. This is the reason why ADT. Helping to protect you with 24-7 monitoring starting at just over a dollar a day. This is the computer that didn't get stolen, keeping photos and financial records safe. And this is the value of ADT. Call and get ADT installed for just $99. ADT, always there. Are you behind on your taxes? Don't try negotiating with the IRS alone. The I Under the blanket of havoc inside the Siegel Center in Richmond, Virginia, it's the Richmond Spiders and the VCU Rams. Brad Johansson, John Griffin, as we take a look at the starting lineups tonight. And we begin with the Richmond Spiders. Brothers and Lindsay at the guard. They played without Derek Williams in winning the first matchup. He's in the starting lineup tonight and for the VCU Rams. Theus and Daniels, the seniors, and they'll add David Hitt to the starting lineup tonight 
the other senior who has already graduated from BCU as we take a look at what Coach Smart is planning for success brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. We have a job to do, and we got a better job defending the three-point line. They made 12 of 27 in the first matchup, so it's obvious that's his key for success. Well, this is a very good defensive team from the three-point line, and they didn't do it in their last game against Richmond. Chris Mooney in his eighth season as the Richmond head coach. What he says about this place, it's like it's a student section everywhere you go. It will be loud and proud all night long. Well, most of the basketball world witnessed what VCU did against Butler not too long ago, and I think they have a healthy respect for playing basketball as an opposing team in the Seagull Center. And they keep their composure early because, as you said, the Rams will be loaded for bear tonight. Richmond with first possession. Brothers in and out on the first shot. Well, VCU handed Brad Stevens and Butler one of the worst losses in Brad Stevens' career. They threw a haymaker early, a knockout punch in the very two first two minutes of the game, and that's something Chris Mooney doesn't want his Richmond Spiders to experience here tonight. The issue on the block to Reddick and back out to Daniels. Richmond wants to set up their half-court defense, and so far doing a pretty good job. They switch every screen. Offensive, and that's a nice defensive set for Mooney's guys on the first one down. Chris Mooney would love to see that almost every possession if he can set up his defense, but this is what VCU does really well. Okay, so Richmond does a great job getting in front. If it's a half-court game, Richmond has a very good chance, but they have to inbound the ball now. This is what VCU does so well, full-court pressure. Lindsay on Theus gets it across. All by his lonesome corner. Robbins for three. That's in and out. Stay alive, and Robbins collects. They'll get another shot at. Well, that's a really good sign. Robbins did not hesitate. He took the shot, and then he got an offensive rebound, which is something Richmond really hasn't had a lot of success doing this year. Turnover. Derek Williams called for Walker. You know, if there's such a thing as a good turnover, that's a good turnover. Well, explain. Well, first of all, Richmond loses the ball. They didn't get a shot because of the walk, but VCU has no opportunity to score in transition. A bad turnover is when Richmond throws the ball away and you see somebody in a white jersey running down the court uncontested and slamming home a dunk. Which actually happened in the first two minutes against Butler when Roosevelt Jones lost the basketball. Graham, that won't go. Nelson Adota the rebound and he collects and gives to Lindsay. A well, couple good defensive possessions so far by Richmond. Mismatch on Brandenburg. Brothers lost it. They is the steal. Brandenburg has it blocked. And Brothers is called for the foul, and he thought he got all ball. Does this go over and back? Take a look. No. Well, you know what? It happened so quickly. Uh, generally, you, you, you kind of uh, consider over and back by where that person had his uh, last, his feet planted last. So, a bit arguable, but what I really loved about that play is the hustle by Theus. You know, when you talk about somebody that epitomizes VCU basketball, it was the diving on the floor of Darius Theus. And he sits down after the steal, the team that does it better than anyone in the country, Briante Weber, in for him, and he is the one who leads the way. Already with 85 steals on the year, 355, a new Atlantic 10 record for the Rams this year. VCU crowd wanted walking on that. I think it's a major accomplishment when a team can get the ball over half court against VCU. Now, Richmond in the half court on their offense, I think they'll get a good quality of shot. Foul called on Weber. 
Trying to knock it away from Brothers. You know, Richmond's offense is kind of a version of the Princeton offense. Chris Mooney played for Pete Carrill. It's not exactly the same. They take some of the same principles, but there's a lot of movement. There's not really just one point guard. There's Chris Mooney, a terrific young coach. Great success at Richmond, following in the history of some a long line of great coaches at Richmond. But nonetheless, we'll see how the big men for Richmond really handle the basketball. A lot of passing, a lot of throwing into the post and kicking it back out. Williams, the big man, got his own rebound, goes back up, had it knocked away. He'll try one more time and can't get it. Brandenburg with the jump to Reddick. First hook of the game with emphasis. Sometimes two points or a dunk is actually worth more than two points. VCU really likes to spread the court and penetrate and dump the ball off. Weber knocked this one away. Three seconds to get it across the timeline. Robbins will inbound. Brothers and Williams will sit. Kendall Anthony in for his first minutes along with Terry Allen. Weber tried to come from behind a little bit too late as Anthony dishes. Trap. Barely got it away. Lindsay goes down and they'll call another foul. Well, it's obvious very early in this game that VCU is not going to let Richmond run its half-court offense. They're going to trap wherever they can. They're going to really try to create a very up-tempo game here. Here's Lindsay. He's going to get trapped. Now, he's a bit undersized at six feet here. Anthony buries the jumper. He had 26 in the first round with these guys. Well, no hesitation from Ken Kendall Anthony. This is a guy that can really light it up. Daniels for three in and out. Oh. Out of bounds, it'll be Richmond ball. Second foul on Briante Weber. One of the most important players on the court for Richmond right now is Greg Robbins. He's taking the ball out of bounds, but he's a guy that kind of settles his team down. He, he kind of huddles them up. Throwing the ball in against this pressure is also very important, but the intangibles that Greg Robbins brings to this lineup is very important in a game like this. So Weber has to sit. He is back in. Robbins into the paint. Lindsay with a dribbling exhibition with the left Nelson Odo to the finish. Well, that was awfully good because VCU tried to trap Lindsay a couple different times and he was able to split the double team and get into the lane. He puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Melvin Johnson in his first minutes, his first shot. One handed rebound by Reddick that had it swatted away. You know, I think the first five minutes of this game are critically important for Richmond and they so far have settled in and if they can just stretch this out for another five minutes this is everything Chris Mooney would have wanted coming into the game. Great move on Reddick by Nelson Odota. Richmond with the three point lead early. Graham has it swatted by Robbins. It will stay with the Rams. VCU starting two for seven from the field. Oh for one from behind the arc. Williams can't get it to go in the early going. It's tough down low. Reddick, he'll find a way. They can do it with authority, but the Rams trail by three. Good start for the Spiders, a three-point lead for Richmond in the early goings. We take a look at the principal financial group edge to the game. Coach, lead us through. 
well. Richmond's done a terrific job so far in this game, controlling the tempo. And Chris Mooney will love to see it keep going. And they've been composed. They're going to have to do this for 40 minutes. VCU, you got to defend the three. They didn't do it the first time they played Richmond. And they want to force turnovers. They want to get easy baskets in transition. That's the uh, signature way of playing for VCU. Well, they've done it in record fashion in the A-10. Another one tonight, 356 steals. That new A-10 record last year, this team had 381 steals and it's still within sight to set a new record for them. And when you're a team that creates that many steals, it accounts for a lot of points. One third of BCU's offense is a result of creating turnovers and getting easy baskets in transition. Travion Graham gets the roll inside the paint. Kendall Anthony and his speed make it a lot easier to get over the timeline in a hurry. You know, and his size is sometimes a little bit hard to trap because he's so small, but he has to play under control when he gets the ball over half court. Robbins baseline. Williams almost lost it. Kendall Anthony up high and drains the jumper. Well, he's a fearless player in spite of his size, 5'8", 140 pounds, the sophomore can really light it up. He plays with a tremendous amount of confidence. Right over top of DJ Haley in his first minutes in for the Rams. Daniels with the floater. In and out, and Robbins the rebound, and Brothers to run. away recollected by brothers Williams on Haley to the glass and gets the roll well Chris Mooney told us before the game Derek Williams is such a talented guy he's got great footwork even though he's big body a bit undersized in the lane Haley misses the dunk Anthony the other way well, it's a fast paced game, but you know, not a lot of points in spite of how fast the ball is moving up and down the court. Deion Taylor in his first minutes, first shot, and Brothers lost an ankle. And we've got a foul away from the ball. Or did they call that a trip? They got Melvin Johnson, and he just simply stepped on his foot and they called the foul. Well, that's a tough foul to take. Yeah, I think uh, maybe the official did not have a good angle here. As you can see this in the, the replay, Brothers just twisted his ankle. That's uh, hopefully he'll be able to get back in this game. That is, uh, looks like a painful injury. And Brothers is so important as a leader for this Richmond team. Threw it away. Deion Taylor couldn't collect that one from Anthony. Trey Davis in for his first minutes. Cedric Lindsay will join Anthony in the backcourt. But Deion Taylor saying, you know, that's my fault. Taylor actually played a terrific game against VCU earlier this season. Had 10 points, made a couple of threes. Foul pulled down low as you saw them working on Brother's ankle. They'll get Taylor on this one. Jared Guest in for his first minute. Substitutions going fast and furious for both coaches in the early going as you see Brothers again taking off his sneaker. It'll be hard to keep track of how, uh, you know, who VCU is putting in the game. They play 11 guys. Nelson Odota will get the foul as Darius Theus tries to take it to the glass. VCU is a much deeper team. They play 11 guys. Eight guys play over 10 minutes a game. Nobody plays more than 28 minutes a game. Daniels inside the arc, drains the jumper. Gets VCU back within three. Five team fouls for each squad right now. But Daniels is one of the best three-point shooters in the country. And he's set records here at VCU for most threes in the season. Cedric Lindsay to the corner. drive gets stopped wanted a walk no whistle 10 on the shot clock Lindsay into the paint off balance and gets the roll 
Well, you want the ball in Cedric Lindsay's hands as the shot clock comes down. He can just get in the lane, beat his man. Redick, finger roll won't go. Nelson Adona the rebound. As you can see, Richmond gets the ball over half court, and then they're content to set up the offense. They like to spread the court. Lindsay for the triple. Stretch the lead to eight. And it's really silenced this crowd. I mean, this crowd can be the X factor, the sixth man, but Richmond's playing with a tremendous amount of poise so far at both ends of the court. Reddick with the turnaround. And the tip dunk by Jerry Guest. Anthony on the run. Great reverse by Nelson Odota. Only a freshman. This guy's got tremendous upside. Daniels for three. 40 straight games. I thought he was pretty well guarded by Deion Taylor, but Daniels has great range. And Lindsay comes right back. The Spiders unfazed tonight. You know what? I can't put two sentences together. This game is just going so much faster than probably we expected. And Richmond is just kind of taking it at them. They're not slowing it down. Chris Mooney likes what his guys are doing. Shaka Smart takes a timeout to talk it over. Lindsay from deep. Well, Lindsay's doing it all. I mean, he's knocking down perimeter shots. He's getting in the lane. And here's a good look at Daniels. You can see his form, his range, his balance. It's easy to understand why he's one of the best three-point shooters in the history of VCU and in college basketball today. He now has 104 threes on the year, 40 straight to the triple, fourth longest streak in college basketball, as you see the points in the paint already, Coach. Well, you know, I'm just awfully impressed with how Richmond has approached this game. I mean, it's a very hostile crowd, a hard place for an opposing team to come in and just keep your composure. Butler being a good example this past week when they came here to play BCU. But you can see Cedric Lindsay, seven points, three of four. He's just playing great basketball. He's a difference maker for the Richmond Spiders. Their lead is seven. Graham. Theus, Reddick, Daniels and Brandenburg on the floor as they wipe up a spot before we get going. Now, Richmond obviously just down the road and because of the weather and because of scheduling here they had some high school tournament games today. They didn't shoot around here today but they still feel comfortable in this gym obviously. Yeah, no, no effects of that. They got here a little bit early and had a chance to shoot around but they're handling things very well both ends of the court. It'll be interesting to see if Darian Brothers can get back into the lineup. He's now reporting to the scorer's table. Lindsay can't get that to go. Theus wants to run. Graham, long three. And the long rebound goes to Lindsay. Five of 15 shooting for the Rams in the early goal. Well, a couple things. Uh, I think Richmond has a pretty good half court defense. They switch everything, so generally somebody's being guarded where they have some kind of weakness is oftentimes around the basket. Robbins takes the ace into the paint, goes up and under, and they extend the lead. And I have to say, VCU looks pretty average at this point. If Richmond has a chance to set up their half court defense, I mean, they're not making shots, of course. But I think on the whole, Richmond's limiting them to one shot. Daniels, rising fire. <laughs> Nelson Adoto was right there. And Nelson Adoto is 6'9", and Daniels shot the ball right over him. 232 threes for Daniels, second all-time at VCU in the trap and a walk. Wayne Sparrow had nowhere to go. But the Spiders are figuring out a way. Wiggling down low. Robbins takes it into the paint on Theus. Spiders by six.
senior not at the Siegel Center. Fans a little bit uneasy here as Richmond has a 21-15 lead. Composure is there. Coach, we talked to Chris Mooney before this game. I said, do you have to practice any difference against these guys? He said, yeah. We put seven guys against five, and you've got to try and figure out a way to get the ball up the floor. It's a good strategy. It seems to be working so far right now. 145 wins. Chris Mooney's done a fantastic job. Product of uh, Pete Burrell, Princeton. He did a great job at Air Force Academy. He started out as a high school coach in the Philadelphia area. Actually coached a small college called Arcadia College where he had the part-time job of wedding planner. That? So this guy's done it all. And Shaka Smart has done the same thing. You know, these guys just didn't become overnight sensations. They worked their way up, paid their dues, and now enjoying the benefit of all that hard work. Daniels for three more. That won't go. Johnson the rebound to Reddick and he's fouled. They finally get a second shot and another rebound because Richmond in the early going dominating 12 to 7 on the glass. You kind of expect that uh, at least in some respects you don't expect that VCU is a much better rebounding team and has been over the course of the season Richmond one of the weaker rebounding teams in the Atlantic 10 so all in all Richmond doing a good job on the glass. Reddick can't get the first you see his numbers going up averaging over nine rebounds a game in the A-10. Eighth in points in the conference second in rebounds and he gets one out of two at the line. Guest will check back in Graham take a seat. Now Mooney did say he wasn't a very good wedding planner didn't he. Didn't need to be. <laughs> He was better at something else. They break the press again rather easily. Well, you're absolutely right. Kendall Anthony just gets the ball over half court so quickly. Brothers is back in the game. It'll be interesting to see if he can cut as effectively as he's done early in the game. And how about the first half of Greg Robbins? Not only is he, I think, settling down his team, but he's also scoring very effectively in the low post. The lead is seven. Weber running the show out top. This is exactly the pace and the tempo of the game that Chris Mooney wanted for his team coming in to this game tonight. Reddick out high. Johnson down low to Reddick. Simply lost him in the paint. How do you lose Reddick in the paint? Well, you know, a little bit of confusion because Richmond switches everything. Can't get the roll. Allen the rebound back up and off the glass. Strong move down low by Terry Allen, the freshman from Houston. We're going to talk a lot about the young front court players of Richmond. Melvin Johnson from well beyond the arc. Only a freshman. We saw him make a nice pass and then a big three. Gets the crowd back in the game here. Anthony. Double dribble. And another turnover. But not a bad one. Havoc plays a little effect. They're climbing back in on senior night at the Seagull. Who thinks more is better than less? Okay, why? More is better than less because if stuff is not what if there's more. And now it's official. During our break. Havoc in the student section named the 2013 Naismith Student Section of the Year. So now I guess you understand why Chris Mooney says it seems like it's a student section all the way around here. Well, it's a great crowd. I mean, VCU has generated a tremendous following, not just on campus, but within the city of Richmond. VCU at the Siegel Center, rather dominant. How have they done here? Well, the numbers are pretty strong. 34 straight sellouts here at the Siegel Center. And if they get it tonight, that makes 35, as you see some of the numbers. 23 and 6 this year, 14 and 2 at home. Reddick down low on Robbins, half hook, that one short, got his own rebound, and Robbins looked like he had all ball, but from behind, he will get the foul. Not thrilled with the call. Personal foul, Johnson 
Well, VCU clearly has an advantage around the basket. Riddick is just a very athletic front court player. Follows up his own miss. We'll get to the foul line. He's a 70% foul shooter. Six double doubles in his last 10 games. How about, seven, eight, ten double doubles. And how about 17 rebounds against St. Joe's in that game? That can really run the floor at 28 against William and Mary. They do so many different training sessions here at VCU, including karate. I was here earlier, and Shaka Smart asked me if I wanted to work out with him prior to this game. I said, no, I think I'm just going to go to the treadmill myself. Yet another steal. Johnson one-hander. And guest with the finish. Well, that's the offensive rebounding that we talked about. It's oftentimes a result of a fast break scoring opportunity. They might not score on the first time, but they score on the second time. Another trap. Another walk. Chris Mooney wants a foul. He's just uh, arguing that the trap was too aggressive, but you can't really dribble the ball over half court and pick it up. And this is where generally VCU capitalizes. They string together a couple good plays, and they get the opposing team out of sync. And on the other side, Richmond has to keep their composure and move on to the next play. Forget about the last play. He is into the paint. And one. And the Rams have their first lead since 3-2. to two. Well, Theus isn't a guy that necessarily looks for a shot first. He generally penetrates the pass. But that time he got all the way into the lane and was able to finish. Melvin Johnson and the follow from Guess. Well, this is what VCU does so well. And then here's a good look at Thies going into the lane without any defenders picking him up. But VCU on a little bit of a roll now. And this is where they try to throw at that knockout punch, and Richmond just has to settle down. Brothers back in and quickly picks up his second. Allen with the rebound. Triple from Deion Taylor. Shaka Smart talked about making sure we had a hand up on Deion Taylor, another freshman. A whistle away from the ball. Got this one on Anthony in a mismatch. Trying to guard Trevion Graham. But Richmond does a great job of uh, spreading out the defense. They put a lot of pressure by penetrating and passing. And Deion Taylor having another good game. Very confident stroking the ball from beyond the arc. It's a 45% from beyond the three-point line. Seventh team foul already in the bonus now at the 6.02 mark, and Graham will shoot one and one. Graham a 71% three-point shooter. Chris Mooney having a conversation. Dennis Alaco. VCU is, is a 69% foul shooting team. They're ranked ninth in the Atlantic 10 Conference. Shaka Smart is in such great shape, and he's so active during the course of the game. You almost get a sense that he wants to be the sixth man, or he could be out on the court playing. Oh, he could. Not it up again. Four for Graham. Anthony gets it across and then gets trapped. He's in trouble again. And we've got a foul. They'll get this one on Brandenburg. Well, Anthony, in spite of his size, aggressively fought off that double and even triple team. If you see you in this trap, as you can see this now, they're real aggressive in this trap. They really lock you in. They, they just kind of get up next to you, no place to go. And I think the only reason VCU got called for the foul is they started reaching for the basketball. Well, case in point, it's not just getting across the timeline. Once you get across the timeline, you need help. Anthony in and out on that one. K 
kept alive. And a timeout called by Williams as he gets it into the corner. All knotted up at 28. 30 second, 30 second timeout. Take all the way back. Gambier, Ohio, and Kenyon College. He doesn't look a whole lot different. No, he hasn't aged too much, actually. He's had so much success as a head coach, it hasn't taken a toll. Gambier, located for those Ohioans close to Mount Vernon. He says you have to intentionally go to Gambier, Ohio. You can't just actually get there. But he has been a success and on the road to success. He was made to do what he's doing right now. Yeah, he really has a feel for it. He's a natural. He certainly has paid his dues, worked his way up, but he's worked with some terrific coaches along the way. And, and when you look at what VCU has accomplished in a very short period of time, I mean, it's awfully impressive. He's surrounded by great company. Just in the time that he's been there, 107 wins. And he's making sure that he gets his point across for the next whistle that blows. I have to say that these younger coaches like Shaka Smart, Chris Mooney, and I think of Brad Stevens in the Atlantic 10, we're blessed with having a bunch of some of the better young coaches in America in the Atlantic 10 Conference. I think they really have it in perspective. They found a way to be successful and still have fun, enjoy what they do at the same time. Brothers first with an ankle, and now with two fouls still on the bench, Lindsey will go to the glass. Great drive by Cedric Lindsey. He does a great job of threading through the defense. It looked like DC was trying to trap, and he very easily got through the defenders. Daniels with the left, too strong. Williams the rebound. Anthony for three, buries it. A sophomore from Tennessee just shows no hesitation. He's playing with a tremendous amount of confidence. This is a guy that had nine of his 26 in the overtime period against VCU. He wants the basketball when it matters. Great dump down low to Robbins. You said it at the outset. Cedric Lindsay had the lead to show he's doing exactly that right now. I'm not sure he can play much better. And this is a game changer. This guy does it at both ends of the court. But he's handling the basketball flawlessly. He's getting the ball to his teammates. And even though they look like easy passes, they're not. That was a terrific pass to Greg Robbins. Seven points for Lindsay. He's averaging over 17 in his last six, but he's dishing so well tonight. Yeah, and you know what I think he does? He just creates a sense of composure. His teammates are awfully confident when the ball is in his hands. Something's good is going to happen. And yeah, these are not easy plays because he's going up against very good athletic defenders. Seven nothing run for the Richmond Spiders. Takes it to the glass on his own and when he can't do it he finds he finds a man that's open. He has great court sense. You can see in that last play VC was trying to trap him but he found a way to get through two defenders and when help defense came his way he was still able to finish and they have played the next very play he, he dumps the ball off to Greg Robbins. Those two, Lindsay now with nine. Johnson will take it on his own. Spin off balance and the tip goes. Well, Greg Robbins wants the ball right out of the net so he can inbound the ball quickly. BC sometimes handles the ball when it goes through the hoop. Robbins with the dump to Allen. They're finding the open lanes. Well, Greg Robbins is a forward, but he's second on the team in assists. He has a great feel for the game. This guy's a glue guy. He's really another guy that's paid his dues and he's playing great basketball in his senior year. Johnson again on the spin on Allen. Backed him down and floated the one-handed. Not an easy basket for the freshman. Again, Robbins across. Corner short. Graham the rebound. Rams want to run. Richmond does a pretty good job of getting back. You know, they really don't try to get too many offensive rebounds. Especially on a perimeter shot like that, they get down the court and they're trying to protect the basket.
Johnson from the elbow. Starting to feel it is 32. Well, the Johnson's averaging almost seven points a game. It is Spider Ball. Preseason all rookie. He wears 32 from Magic Johnson, creating just a little bit of magic in the Siegel Center, but the Rams down three. Back at the Siegel Center, three point lead for the Richmond Spiders. They're coming up on ATT at the half from New York. Brent Stover with analyst Mateen Cleves, Abdul Nabi, John Rostin going to give you the scores and highlights of all of tonight's college hoops action and preview the 12th ranked New Mexico Lobos against the Wolfpack of Nevada. Following us, tune in for AT&T at the half. Senior night at the Siegel Center. What did they do last night for this one, Coach? Well, Shaka Smart had started something that he, he really felt was emotional. Each of the players on the team got a chance at this private dinner to talk about their feelings toward the seniors. So it kind of felt like uh, it was a very emotional night and the players really responded and it would better help them focus on the task at hand tonight, which is to beat Richmond and not necessarily be focused on the emotional experience of senior night. So it was a great night for his upperclassmen. And he said, just a great bonding experience for his team. A rare mistake on the offensive end for the Spiders tonight. Threw that one away. Another turnover. But so far, the turnovers of Richmond have not cost them. They've not led to easy baskets in transition for the Rams. Theus weaves his way to the rim. Well, if there's been a gap at all in Richmond's defense so far tonight, it's been sometimes when they switch screens or switch ball screens, they're letting somebody get in between them. That time, Theus does a terrific job of getting to the basket. Got it to Davis, and he got it to Allen. They're finding the open man tonight. Well, Chris Mooney and his staff said, Kevin McGann told me, there can't be any hesitation. When you beat their pressure, and you get it over half court, and you have a three on two, you have to take it. You have to be aggressive, and so far, Richmond's doing that. Johnson inside to Reddick, had it knocked away. Johnson recollects, goes up with a one handed floater, which is short. He wanted a foul, no call. Anthony from deep, that's long. Johnson the rebound, saves to Daniels. Theus again on the drive and the one hand off the glass. Back within one. Well, he does what his team needs when it's needed to get done. Theus again, we talked about the heart of Theus and how important he is to the chemistry of his team. Allen a little too long and then a silly foul. And that one will send the Rams back to the line. Darius Theus between he and Weber, 160 steals on the year coming into this. That's more than 67 Division I teams combined. That, that was a shocking statistic to me. To see that two guys alone can outperform on the defensive end over 60 schools in Division I. But so far, it has not had an effect on the Richmond Spiders. They've been all four poised in the first half. And as I look at the score, and I say, you know, we're on pace for an 80-point game. I don't think Richmond's going to hold the lead if the pace or tempo of the game is that quick. But right now, we're tied with 49 seconds to go in the first half. Reddick with one more to give the Rams the lead. You're Richmond, uh, you know, you've had the lead most of the half. Right now, down one. You've got to feel pretty good even going into the locker room because Darian Brothers, who's averaging 15 points a game, has not scored so far in the first half. You see their lead now. 
the assists. Teddy Oki Rafer comes in for him. About 14 seconds difference between game and shot clock. Step on the line, but they will call the foul and the push appears to be on Reddick, and it will be. Officials are calling this pretty tight, and then, you know, it's not uh, working to VCU's advantage. Cedric Lindsay's hard to trap, but you can see it's a lot of contact there. Reddick has called for the foul, so. On the whole, Richmond's doing a very good job of fighting these double teams. And allow Richmond now to get the last shot here. Reset of the shot clock. Williams is fouled by Guest. And that will be the 17th foul, sending him to the line for one and one. These two teams seem awfully evenly matched to me when it becomes a half court game. It's not obvious that either has an advantage. It's just that ECU generally has over the course of the season made other teams play their style of play and they've capitalized on the fact that they play 11 players they run guys in and out and they create havoc with their full court pressure substitutions galore on both sides reddick and graham both back in robbins with lindsey williams allen and taylor for the spiders knotted up again at 40. Richmond's going to be a very good team next year with their front court players getting a lot of minutes. They're very skilled. And really the key guy they lose is Darian Brothers, but you got Kendall Anthony back and Cedric Lindsay. Along with these front court players, Greg Robbins is going to be hard to replace. But nonetheless, I think they're going to be an awfully good team and one of the higher ranked teams in the conference next year. And they've been playing without that key guy Brothers most of this first half with two fouls and an ankle injury. Five on the clock. Brandenburg lets fly and it's pure. VCU closes the half on a 13 4 run after getting dominated early. Well, a tough shot there, Brandenburg, to finish the first half. But all in all, I thought Richmond played a pretty strong first half. But VCU kind of snuck up on the end there. And I think it's important for VCU to try to keep the momentum going in the locker room and Richmond to somehow regain their composure. Brandenburg finds the opening, and it's not much of it, but he's got him in the lead, 43-41. Let's go to CBS Sports Studio and AT&T at the half. Get ready for a four-day AT&T at the half. Rethink possible. Richmond on the road against Havoc, only down two right now, 43-41 as VCU closes on a 13-4 run, despite the Spiders shooting 60% in the opening half. What'd you see, Oliver? I think familiarity breeds contempt. It also breeds confidence. You can tell the Spiders aren't afraid of this team, but let's give them credit. You said as well as they're shooting, VCU's gotten back in this game by getting some steals and getting to the bucket. And I like the fact that Darius Theas, the senior point guard on senior night, is starting to assert himself. He's dropping his shoulder no matter what, trying to get to the basket. And how about the mileage that Richmond is getting out of their young big man? Alonzo Nelson, a Dota, has been terrific, and so has Terry Allen. One thing we need to look at right now for Richmond, winning the battle on the glass. That's imperative if you're going to beat VCU. The Spiders, Darian Brothers, 15 points per game. He's 0 of 1, no points in the opening 20. All right, Georgetown. Winners of 11. Quick thought, Ala. We got a two-point game. VCU's. We start the second half leading Richmond, despite the Spiders shooting 60%. For me, the, the, the tide has turned with VCU. It's gotten in their favor right now. The way they finished that first half is what the way they're going to want to start the second half. Richmond has to fight against that. That's going to be a tough 20 minutes coming up. VCU, the seniors, Darius Theus and Daniels. Go at it. This is your last hurrah, big right. fella. You got to go at it. You know what they say at the Siegel Center? Havoc lives here. We'll find out in the next 20 minutes. <laughs> we will. We'll find out who the tenant is. 43-41, and again, brothers. 15 points a game for Richmond. He's got nothing. So Lockdown. Dante Lockdown. Weber, best on-ball defender in the country. Could possibly be. you got to watch the second half to find out for sure. <laughs> That's a tease. Second half up next from Richmond at VCU. <laughs>
This has been AT&T at the half. AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. Rethink possible. Strength on senior night. The VCU Rams had to have a little strength to take a two-point lead into the locker room. 43-41. Brad Johansson alongside John Griffin will fix the headset first before we go. Well, you don't see a whole lot of college basketball games that are going to be in the 80s. We may get one tonight. Well, this is a fast paced and very entertaining first half. I thought both teams played really good basketball. I was awfully surprised at the start that Richmond had in this game. They play with a lot of poise and composure. That's exactly what Coach Chris Mooney wanted coming into this game. And then you saw a run there later in the first half by VCU. That's what they do so well. They got on a run and they go in the locker room at halftime with a lead. You said that Cedric Lindsay would have to lead the Spiders. He certainly did in the first half, didn't he? Yeah, he was terrific at both ends of the court. We're not going to show a lot about his defense, but offensively, I thought he handled the pressure very well. He got in between the defenders and he recognized whatever the defense was giving him. He played with a lot of confidence and poise. Here he goes to the basket. You just saw him pull up for a jumper. And he's just playing terrific basketball, and he's part of the reason why Richmond is only down two at halftime. Reddick on the other end. He hasn't been dominant, but he has helped them get where they need to be. Well, a lot of guys have contributed offensively for VCU. Reddick has eight first half points with three rebounds. And when you look at the stats, really what jumps out at you is VCU has only two turnovers. They've gotten 11 points off those turnovers of Richmond and they're getting to the foul line seven free throws so that really seven free throws has been the difference in the first half in terms of point differential our Avis key stats this is a team that continues to bother them in turnovers there is your leading score Cedric Lindsay with nine 43 41 and not a single player in double digits in the first half well both coaches have gone to their benches quite a bit in this first half I'll be interested to see how Darian Brothers plays in the second half because Richmond really needs his 15 points. I'm not sure they can win this basketball game if he scores in the single digits. Now at the same time, I do not think Richmond's a team that feels comfortable playing at an 80 point pace. So I'd like to see them kind of slow this game down a little bit in the second half. Brandenburg into the paint, the jump stop and he got fouled, he'll head to the line. They got Nelson Adoga on this one. That'll be his third personal, and that's significant. He had to spend a bunch of time because of two fouls on the bench in the first half. Brandenburg with his fifth point of the game. Well, Brandenburg is another one of the 6'2", the 6'3", very athletic guards. A lot of the players at VCU are very interchangeable, but he's a dynamic player. He can get to the basket. He's averaging over 10 points a game. Their magic number with Brandenburg is 11. Number 11 gets to 11. They're 14 and 0 on the season when he does that, and already a turnover. Brandenburg to add to the total. Oh, a good start to the second half by VCU and one of the few turnovers of Greg Robbins here tonight. Corner, Nelson Adota steps inside the arc and drains it. And he has a nice stroke for a big man. This is a guy that can play. A lot of places on the floor, but a very talented young player for the Spiders. Darian Brothers back on the floor and back on the ball. Graham jump stop. Right now, VCU's offense is really clicking. They're getting a good quality shot. They're getting in the lane. It gives them every field goal they make gives them a chance to set up this full court pressure. They get it across. Robbins, corner, Nelson Adota charging and back out to Darian Brothers for three. 
Doesn't seem rusty, does he? No, he sure does. And Brothers is just so good when his feet are set. He didn't have to put the ball on the floor. Brandenburg, travel. And he looked like he lost an ankle a little bit. Gets up slowly. Briante Weber will replace Theus. Brandenburg will sit as well. Melvin Johnson to come in for him. I spoke to VCU coaches before the game. Mike Rhodes is the associate head coach. He said, you know, the spirit of chemistry on our team is so terrific late in the season because players know they're going to play. They're going to get in the basketball game. They're going to play 10 minutes or more. He said our attitude in the last week of the regular season can't be any better. Briante Weber spins and the jumper from 18. because I didn't really see any room. Look how Lindsey kind of weaves in between the defenders. There's three guys that had a chance to play him, and he just somehow finds a way. I think if he were a halfback in football, he'd be very successful getting through the line of scrimmage because he just has a knack of seeing the daylight. Weber can't stay long. He has to sit. He picks up his third foul. As you see Dion Taylor back on the floor. And Lindsay now with 12. Oh, he now has double figures in nine of his last 11 games. He's just playing great basketball. He gets a little rest here. He'll be back in the lineup shortly, but Coach Chris Mooney awfully happy with the play right now of Cedric Lindsay. Kendall Anthony on the floor for him. Graham may have gotten away with the travel. VCU is trying to take advantage of the fact that their front court players might be a little quicker and better able to put the ball on the floor. Graham did a great job getting to the basket. Anthony on the drive, and they'll call a blocking foul. Get this one on Theus, and that'll be his second. I'll give the Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Year last year. A little daylight, and he's going to take full advantage. He just kind of has an afterburner here. He turns on the speed, and he just takes it right at the defender. Good on the first. Brothers will sit. Lindsay already back on the floor. Robbins will sit. And Trey Davis come on for him. Scored 31 earlier this season against the Air Force. Career high for him. Nice spin. Melvin Johnson too hard off the glass. Lindsay on the drive and the float. Offensive. Count the bucket, he says. Count the bucket. the field goal. Take a look at it one more time. Should they count this, Coach? It's kind of hard to tell from this angle. I'm going to say yes. I think he should because he was able to release the shot before he actually made contact with the defender. I'm not sure he really had enough space to come down after he went up in the air, but nonetheless, as a coach, you'd like to get the two points if you're going to give up the foul. But Kevin McGee, one of the assistants that Richmond told me earlier today, uh, Cedric Lindsay just disrupts the defense. And he does. And BC is one of the best defensive teams in the country. Get a foul down low on Terry Allen. On Reddick on the block. It's a good look at Lindsay. He doesn't seem uh, all too out of breath. He's been playing 
great basketball, putting everything on the court at a very fast-paced game. Taylor on the defense can't do anything about Graham taking it to the rim. Graham's been impressive here in the second half, getting to the basket. Full-court pressure here. Richmond doing a good job of trying to keep the ball in the center of the court. Jaka Smart said in his walkthrough today, he really wanted to try to put the ball on the, force the ball to the sidelines. I think Richmond countering that, doing a very good job keeping the ball in the center of the floor. Lindsay with nine on the shot clock. Fade away. Short. Rebound is there from Allen and the put back. What a poised move there by Terry Allen. He gave a little ball fake to get the defender in the air. When I think of Terry Allen and Nelson, Adota, Eric Williams coming back, he's a junior. Cedric Lindsay, Kendall Anthony's a sophomore. You're already looking down the road, aren't you? Well, I mean, you kind of have to think of uh, the future in spite of the fact Richmond's having a pretty good year. Got a foul down low. We're gonna get this one on Allen. Trey Davis with a nice swap. We're all knotted up at 55. Second chance points from Terry Allen. Got it that way. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Avis, where a car is much more than a rental. It's your space. By Warner, number one in ladders. And by Principal Financial. It's time to see your financial future. It's time to dream again with the principal. Well, welcome back to the Seagull Center. We have a great game here. The score is tied at 55 with a little under 15 minutes to play. And we want to show you a little bit about Richmond's offense and how they execute so well. They space the floor and they play very unselfishly. Look at the ball movement here and watch this penetration. We'll stop it right here. And you can see good court awareness as he finds his teammate on the perimeter. And this is what I think Brothers, the beneficiary of this terrific pass, does so well as draining threes. But Chris Mooney has to be so happy right now with the execution of his team in the half court. His first hoop on the night. We mentioned he spent most of the first half on the bench with two fouls. He turned his ankle early on. But he comes out with no rush. They could use a little bit more offense from him. Yeah, absolutely. He's got to get double digits, but he's got a good quality of shot. And if he can shoot the ball, the ball with his feet set, not having to put it on the floor, he's a deadly shooter. One of the best in the country right now, shooting over 43% from the three point line. Reddick now in double figures with 10. And a two point lead for the Rams. Anthony, get it up ahead. Speed kills. Yeah, folks. he's just so hard to trap. You know, it looks like VCU is running after him all the time, and you don't see that too often because VCU players on the wing in this press are awfully fast. Robbins on the block gets double teamed, and they got a push. The lead they'll get Jared Guest on this one. And that is Guest's second foul. <laughs> It's a pass down the lane, and Richmond's offense takes full advantage of trying to get the ball in the lane and kicking it back out. And Greg Robbins does a good job of understanding what the offense is trying to accomplish. Darian Brothers again from the corner, his second triple in this half. The Brothers was the guy that made the big three to take the game in the overtime in January, and right now he's stroking the ball as well as he did in that game. Brandenburg in for Daniels on the last timeout. Corner. Johnson to answer. That's long. Robbins the rebound. They'll get it ahead to Lindsay. Williams wants it on the block. Backs in. Goes with the left. Can't get the roll. Got his own rebound. I've always liked guys that are a bit undersized, and he's only 6'6", 
but with his girth at 285 pounds, he makes up for the fact that he's a couple inches shorter. He's able to create a lot of space with that width. Threw it out of bounds. Turnover. He wasn't playing in the first time around. They did it without him and got the win. And we talked about it in the early going that he gives them that power down on the block. You talk about his thickness. As he was going through shooter on, I asked him, I said, it's a serious neck as you see Cedric Lindsay go down. I said, give me a shot of that neck if you can on 34 because he goes, well, I'm about a 19. He had a tough time finding shirts with a 19 neck. He's got great footwork. He really has great skills with the basketball. Nelson Adoda. And Richmond has extended the lead to six. Timeout on the floor. The Spiders, you want composure? They are unfazed by Havoc tonight. An 8-0 run for the Richmond Spiders have them up 63-57 as we take a look at our lowest game improvements. I have to say, Richmond is uh, doing what it set out to do in the beginning. They're controlling the tempo. They got a lot of points in the paint, and they're rebounding the ball extremely well. They're out rebounding VCU, and they're not turning the basketball over. VCU has not done a particularly good job of defending the three. You can see how well Richmond's shooting the basketball, and they have enforced a lot of turnovers. They've gotten 13 points, but they generally get more. Our Lowe's game improvements. Lowe's never stop improving. Chris Moody seems to improve every time they take on VCU this year, doesn't it? Yeah, this would be a huge win for the Richmond Spiders for a lot of different reasons. Bragging rights in this part of the state, which is a great, really a great part of the state for college basketball. He is to the glass, and he'll go to the line. Theus now with eight. The senior that started it all for Shocker Smart here at BCU. Well, we've seen Theus get to the rim a couple times tonight, and here he's doing it again in the second half. Very strong going to the basket. Oftentimes he's looking for his teammates. When he sees the pass, he'll take it, and he's strong enough that he can finish. You know, there's a lot of time left to play. Nelson Adota with his fourth foul. He's been playing terrific tonight. But if you remember in that January game, and when it looked like VCU was going to win, they were up seven with 30 some seconds to go. Richmond tied the game and took it in overtime and won. So with 13 minutes to play here, it feels like a lifetime. Frustration on the bench for that spider. And a foul called on Weber, and that would be his fourth. He's collected four in very few minutes on the floor. So Brandenburg will come back in for him. I have to say, Richmond has an aggressive attitude on offense. When they're being trapped, they just fight it off very quickly. They're not hesitating. When you have guys like Kendall Anthony handling the basketball, he's just so quick, low to the ground. Very difficult to trap. Deion Taylor on the floor. Williams baseline through the elbow and they'll call it offensive. A pretty aggressive play along the baseline here by the big man. The charges blocks are one of the toughest calls to make. I mean, we could sit here all day long and watch it again and have a different opinion. But nonetheless, uh, probably an unforced turnover by Richmond. They've been playing pretty well, not turning the basketball over, but not a bad turnover. You keep emphasizing that. Well, I can't. I, I can't stress how important it is. And another whistle down low. And they'll get Derek Williams, first the offensive, and this one on the defensive side. That'll be his third. Now he spent so many years coaching against John Cheney, who was a very successful coach at Temple Hall of Famer. And he, I think, understood the mathematics of basketball better than most. And the way you win basketball games is not giving your opponent easy scoring opportunities. And so in his mind, not all turnovers are equal. There are good ones and bad ones. He hated all of them, but 
He hated bad ones more than good ones. Theus will sit. They will also bring Lindsay and Robbins back on the floor. Brandenburg got them both. Kaylee on the floor for the Rams. Melvin Johnson helping with the press. Anthony gets it across. And again, he's doing a great job of keeping the ball in the center of the floor. Generally, Richmond clears out when one of their guards gets the ball and tries to bring it up the floor. And another whistle in the paint. They got Daniels on that one. That will be his first. Five team fouls on VCU. Lindsay to set it up. Inside 12 minutes to play. One point game and a push. They will get that one on DJ Haley. Sixth team foul on VCU. It's a one point game. Back at the Siegel Center, one point lead for the Richmond Spiders. Let's take a look at tonight's Barbasol slam of the night. And it goes to Mr. Reddick. Well, Javante Reddick is a guy that can play above the rim, and he's been the recipient of a couple good passes. Look how strong he goes to the basket with two hands. There's no defending that. Javante Reddick playing a terrific game tonight with 10, 10 points so far. He has been a beast down on the block. Looking for his 11th double double on the year. And all Chris Mooney wants to do right now is get to the last five minutes and be in the same position and have a chance to win the game with five minutes to go. So far, his team has done extremely well over almost a 30 minute stretch. You can see that he's won eight of his last 13 games against ranked opponents. Richmond has always been a giant killer, going back to the days of Coach Tarrant and, and, and uh, John Beeline. And, now with Chris Mooney. Anthony rises and fires inside the paint. Stretches the lead back to three. Three throws really working in the favor of VCU. They've gotten to the foul line so much more than Richmond. Graham. Daniels will let fly. That's sure. Crowd wanted a foul before the shot. Anthony doesn't have the numbers, but will stop and pop. Well, Chris Mooney just put his hands over his face. That was not a good decision. It was one on two. There was no one there to, in any way, get an offensive rebound. One-handed rebound for Allen as Reddick can't get it to go. This morning saying, let's just slow it down, let's run our offense. Well, you mentioned the three throw disparity as Richmond throws it away. 13 more free throw attempts for the Rams tonight. It's really hard to offset that, and so far Richmond's been doing it. But they're shooting the ball very well, but generally the team that gets to the foul line more. Simple to say, that's a clear advantage. Williams and Brothers will check back in. Anthony and Allen to sit back down for the Spiders. What surprised me so much about Richmond tonight is the fact that they're out rebounding this year. 23 rebounds so far to 14, and eight of them are offensive. Theus, Graham, Johnson, Reddick, and Brandenburg on the floor for the Rams. Brandenburg to the glass, had it blocked by Robbins. Lindsay dumped to Williams at the glass. Can't get the roll just a little too hard. Graham the other way. What a terrific pass. Terrific execution. Everything except the make. And Cleus ties it up. And a 
strip. Brandenburg in and out. And a foul on Robbins. And it gets the crowd in this game. I mean, this crowd has uh, surfaced at times, and other times it's been awfully quiet. But, you know, a couple good plays here by VCU gets them back into the game. Good hustle there on the part of Melvin Johnson to come up with that loose ball. Daniels will come back in. Brandenburg to sit. Johnson heads to the line for his first free throws of the game. Good on the first. He'll get another. The eighth lead change of the game. Rams back on top by one. This is so impressive. 355 steals on the season, averaging over 12 a game. This is in VCU's DNA. They're committed to it. Cloud on its feet at the Seagull Center. And a foul called. This one on Melvin Johnson. And Lindsay looks like he got his funny bone hit. Doesn't feel too funny. That right arm hanging low. When I talk to the coaches at VCU about recruiting, they try to find players that fit their style of play. Not every coach does that. They sometimes adjust to the quality of players. The talents of the players they have. VCU does the opposite. They say we want to press, so we want guys that are 6'2 or 6'3 that can run and jump. And almost everybody fits that bill when you look across the lineup. Lindsey good on the first. Let's take a look at it again on the attempted steal and see if we can tell where he got hurt. He got chopped. It was quite a swipe by Johnson on that arm. Yeah, he got banged on the elbow, but this is one guy that Richmond cannot afford. And a walk on Theus had brothers in his way. That was a good call, not popular here, but a very good call. That's the fifth turnover only of the night for BCU to Richmond's 12. Lindsay goes to the sideline here. It's going to be attended to. He looks like he's in some pain, but trainers are going to try to get him back into the game quickly. And another foul call. And another one on Johnson. Could you tell by the hit exactly what happened? Did it feel like it may have just thrown it out of joint? You know, it was hard to tell. And sometimes, you know, if your joints are a bit particular, knees and elbows, and it it wasn't obvious that he took a hard hit, but he looks like he's in some discomfort. Brothers good on the first. And we're tied again for the sixth time as they continue to work on Lindsay. Can't spend a lot of time with him on the bench. No, and it looks like his uh, right elbow, so it's a shooting, shooting hand, shooting arm. And our ninth lead change. Working down to Reddick, and they got Williams again. That'll be his fourth. Well, both teams are going to be in the double bonus pretty soon. Referees are calling this game pretty tight, and it's a very physical game. That's the ninth on Richmond. Williams will have to sit. Nelson Odota will come back onto the floor. He has four. Does it seem to you like it's been a consistent whistle first half, second half? You know, I have to say, I think, I think it is. Maybe a little bit tighter now than parts of the first half. But I think VCU is, uh, plays a physical style basketball, particularly in the defensive end, and they're, they're trapping. And the officials are calling VCU when they're getting too aggressive in these double teams. Brothers picked up his dribble, got in trouble, and threw it away. I think it's going to be hard for Richmond to get in their half-court offense without Cedric Lindsay. 
Brothers is a terrific three-point shooter, but he's not really a playmaker. And here comes Lindsay holding that arm, hanging as she comes to the scorer's table, getting ready to check in. Well, Lindsay's a warrior, and he's a guy that just wants to win. Great look down low, Graham. And he'll go to the line for a three-point play. They got the turnover. They got the points. They averaged nearly 25 points a game off turnovers. That's 32% of their scoring. It's an amazing stat. Here's just a double team on the low post, but I'm not sure if uh, there was good communication there. It looked like Kendall Anthony was supposed to rotate down to the baseline, but he was going to have a mismatch regardless. Trying to try, try to defend Graham in the low post going at 6-5 when Kendall Anthony's only 5-8. We see Lindsey back in. Graham converts the three-point play. Lindsey brings it up and gets it to Anthony. Well, this is the guy Chris Mooney wants to have the basketball here as they get into the last 15 seconds on the shot clock. Has to dump it to Allen. He's in trouble. Corner. Robbins lets fly for three. Might have been deflected. But Allen collects. Terry Allen, the 6'8 freshman, right place at the right time, is able to finish and tie this game up with under eight minutes to play. Davis to the scorer's table to check in. Theus into the paint to Reddick. And he's fouled by Robbins, and he thought he had all ball. It can't get any tighter than this. We're knotted at 70. 7.33 to play. Before Allegra, my allergies kept me from enjoying Kate's big moments. After Allegra, that all changed. The power of Allegra. It relieves your toughest symptoms on the toughest pollen days. Only Allegra is both fast and non-drowsy. Allegra. Stop suffering. Start living. What's big? It's huge! Biggest bed in Vegas. And tan. Your skin makes me cry. And smooth all over. Oh, my God! It's called a Brazilian. I did it myself. By accident. But on March 15th. My magic is incredible. Boring! He's got competition. That guy's a magician. He doesn't even have a costume. You wear that? Don't be ridiculous. It's velvet. You can't. Take it off, Bert. The incredible Bert Wonderstone. Wait at PG-13. You have to change. Blah, 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 blah. Starts March 15th. Recap tonight's AT&T game summary, Coach. Well, Richmond's doing a terrific job. They're scoring at a very efficient rate. They're shooting 62% from the field, and they're doing a terrific job on the backboard. BC is doing a good job. What they typically do is they force a lot of turnovers. They haven't turned the ball over a lot. And that's what makes for such a close game. Each team is playing pretty good basketball. It'll be interesting to see who can get on a run here with seven to go because neither team throughout this game has had much separation. Well, you mentioned the difference at the free throw line. This will be the 23rd attempt for VCU. They have made 17, while Richmond is eight of nine from the line. In many respects, it's hard to imagine that Richmond is still in the game given that differential, but that's been offset by the fact that Richmond has shot the ball so well, over 60% from the field. Read it good on both. He's got 12 on the night. Two point lead for the Rams, coach. Sorry, VCU's pressure is generally man to man, and sometimes when teams play zone pressure, they'll trap the first pass. So when the ball gets inbounded, there's a trap initially, but VCU doesn't do that. Kind of a different press, more man-based than zone-based. Speaking of man-based, that was a man's rebound by Graham. A 
Under seven to play. Two point lead for the Rams on senior night at the Seagull Center. Down low and Graham. He had to come get it. Reddick threw it. And it was going to be stolen. And over the back came Graham. He picks up his first. Cedric Lindsay here is a, it's a real mismatch. He's trying to guard a much bigger player than Graham. Graham's going. Trayvon Graham is 6'5. Cedric Lindsay is 6 foot. Cedric Lindsay's a tough defensive player. He did a terrific job of getting around the offensive player. And Trayvon Graham was called for the foul. I thought it was a very good call. Robbins back in. Nelson Adota takes a seat. They called it an offensive foul, so there is no shooting. Theus had the steal that stepped on the line. Chris Mooney wanted to know why weren't we shooting on that one? That's knocked away by Graham. And Robbins complaining that Graham's too close to the ball. Travion Graham is playing Robinson this out of bounds. He, he's big and very active. So you have to have a guy like Robbins inbound the basketball because somebody smaller would not be able to necessarily see who was open to pass the ball to. Anthony back out to Robbins. He lost it off his shoe. That's not the way. Anthony regathers. Ten on the shot clock. Loose again. Back out high. Lindsay into the paint. Anthony head fake. Robbins with two on the clock. And that's off. Here comes Brandon Burr. Gets the roll. Good control by Brandon Burr. It looked like Greg Robbins was trying to take an offensive foul. Timeout, Richmond. The Seagull Center is alive. A four point lead for the VCU Rams. VCU trying to play for an 8 10 title. A game back of St. Louis going into the night, but Richmond playing for a lot more. They're playing for their lives right now. Well, they certainly are. I mean, we talked about it in the very, very beginning, the NCAA tournament, which is a bit of a long shot right now, but seeding in the Atlantic 10 tournament is critically important. And obviously, for bragging rights, a sweep of VCU. But I think the most important is this one the seeding in the Atlantic 10 tournament. You know, getting there and getting a good spot in the tournament at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn coming up in about a week. They stand at seven and seven. They are tied with St. Joe's at that mark. Xavier at eight and six, along with UMass at eight and six. Bonnie's also at seven and seven coming into the night. And you get a sense that uh, between what happens tonight and what happens this weekend, here's a good look at the Atlantic 10 tournament. Only 12 teams qualify. Out of 16 teams in the league, but you get a sense that the games tonight and the games Saturday or Sunday are going to matter for a lot of coaches and a lot of players. Spiders trail by four. And Robbins got a little shiver from Graham as he takes it down on the block. So the A-10 tournament next week at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. First round on the 14th. You and I will be there for the quarterfinals on the 15th and the semis on the 16th. The championship game on March 17th. Robin is good on the first. Reddick will come back in. Guests take a seat. Allen will check back in for the Spiders. Here comes. Darius Theus, Weber back out again. And Anthony will sit, brothers back on the floor. I think everybody's excited about the Atlantic 10 tournament being at the Barclays Center from 
a number of years it's been in Atlantic City. This is the first time the venue will be at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, home of the Nets. Lindsay for three. That's long. Kept alive by Robbins again. Lindsay to the glass. Time after time, Cedric Lindsay is able to find his way to the basket. The junior from Washington, D.C., Gonzaga High School, Gonzaga Prep, is playing a fabulous game tonight against a very good defensive team. Hustle points in favor of the Spiders on that time down. And Johnson answers. Inside five minutes to play, the lead is three for the Rams. Well, this is where it all comes into focus. It's crunch time. Poise, execution, and stamina all come into play. Brothers with Theus on him. Ten on the shot clock. Brothers wheels, lost it. Got it to Lindsay. Bails him out. Offensive, but count the hoop. Second time tonight we've had that call this end. That that just doesn't happen that often, but again, Prince Mooney, I'm sure not necessarily pleased. Chris Mooney doesn't like the call at all. The fans are starting to give it to him, but Lindsay again, a very amazing fashion is able to control his body and just even get the shot off kind of looked like Theus was sliding into that as Lindsay was going up to bail them out Mooney with continual conversation now with Jeff Clark Nelson Adota walked up to check in and will now come back down Theus to the other end and makes the first. Well, I think that's the thing that uh, Chris Mooney was concerned about. The fact that Theus would go to the foul line at the other end. Johnson sits. Brandenburg back on the floor. So it's not a ball control foul. And so the consequence of giving him that field goal and the foul coming after he releases the basketball is it's two shots or one on one at the other end. And he makes one of two. The lead is two for VCU. Knocked away by Reddick. Another steal. Here comes Graham. Theus sets for three. Allen the rebound. He almost had too much time. Wide open. Robbins baseline. And it knocked by Theus and a foul call on Theus. That will be his third. He changed it to Graham. They'll give this one to Graham. Cedric Lindsay with 19 points on the night. The lead is two. Under four minutes to play. Take a look at the A-10 standings. Temple gets a jump on Butler tonight as we take a look at some of the big scores tonight. Charlotte had to come from down late against Duquesne to win that game. And a big win for Dayton over the Bonnies, which is significant for Richmond as they came in tied with the Bonnies at that number. Big win for St. Joe's and LaSalle. So the middle of the pack in the Atlantic 10 is, is awfully jumbled. St. Joe's helps themselves. They now have eight wins. Charlotte has seven wins, and those two teams will face off this weekend. So St. Joseph's at Charlotte is going to be a big game for both teams. Robbins to the line. Seven points on the evening for him. Good on the second. It's a one point lead. Oh 
Well, these two teams are familiar with tight games coming down the back stretch. And when we talked about the last time the two teams played, it went into overtime. Richmond really dominated that overtime period. Graham gets the roll. Davion Graham has made some difficult and very strong moves to the basket. He's very good at putting the ball on the floor. One or two dribbles, and he just jumps over the defender. 17 on the night for Graham. From the corner, Allen drains the triple. We're knotted again at 79, the ninth tie of the game. Terry Allen, the freshman, he's only averaging three points a game. But this is a guy that stepped up. He had 11 against Fordham and a terrific player out of the state of Texas. This is what Lindsey does so well. He stretches the defense, he puts a lot of pressure for somebody to help out, and he finds the open man. Coming up next, more college hoops. 12th ranked Lobos of New Mexico visit the Wolf Pack of Nevada. In a Mountain West showdown, you can see the Battle of the Wolves only on CBS Sports Network, 24-hour home of CBS Sports. You haven't missed anything. They'll tip at 10:15, and you don't want to miss anything here. So we'll take you right up to it. 3:11 left here, all knotted up in the ninth tie of the game at 79. Oh, it doesn't see the get, game reset, coach. Yeah, possession goes to Richmond on a jump ball, but uh, you can see both teams are in the double bonus. Both teams have two timeouts remaining, but. You know, it doesn't get much better than this. College basketball in March. We're tied with three minutes to go. A lot on the line. And, you know, this is just a natural rivalry. And it's so great that it's part of the same league. I mean, you look at schools like St. Joe's and Temple and LaSalle and Philadelphia. And you have Butler, Xavier as a natural rivalry in the league. This is about as good as it gets in the Atlantic 10. Graham with 19 gives VCU another two point lead. Lindsay will take it himself. Too hard off the glass. VCU is going to take its time to reset. Shaka Smart's going to call play. Darius Theus, the senior leader, into the paint with the flip and the follow from Reddick. Reddick so good around the basket, and that's really where VCU has had an advantage tonight. Travion Graham going to the basket, Reddick on the offensive class. Lindsay working on Theus. Spins had it knocked away. Daniels the other way. Got Theus. Reddick finger roll. Well, VCU can score points very quickly, and they've gotten on a roll. It didn't take very long, probably less than a minute. They open up a lead. It's now six points with a minute 39 to go. Ties their largest lead of the night. The Spiders have been in control so much of this, but VCU has never gone away. Our Napa play of the game tonight just happened. Javante Reddick with this putback. A good drive to the basket by Feast, but a better finish by Reddick. Reddick with 16 points on the night to go along with seven rebounds. He has been to the free throw line 11 times, made eight of those, and four for eight from the floor. Now four in double figures for the Rams. In a hurry the other way. Doesn't have the numbers, doesn't care, but he lays it short. Well, he found a way to get to the basket and a little bit off balance. Al 
Allen trips Weber up and gets the foul. Here's the Cedric Lindsay outrunning everybody. About four white jerseys, and it looks like the ball just hung on the rim. It didn't drop for him. But the pace of this game, particularly in the last six or seven minutes, has really started to favor VCU. Richmond only averages 70 points a game, and VCU averages almost 78. So right now, this 80 plus point game, the tempo of this game, really favors the Rams as you come down the last minute and a half. Weber with his fourth point on the night. 87 79. Largest lead of the game for the Rams. Allen steps back short on the triple. Redick the rebound. And Weber's fouled by Cedric Lindsay. You know, Shaka Smart and the coaches said if we get a lead with 30 seconds to go, we're not going to stop doing what we do because we don't think the game is out of Richmond's reach. So right now it's an eight-point lead with one minute to go. Don't expect them to stop pressing and trying to score more points. The reason coach says that, 42 seconds remain. VCU was up by seven, and somehow Richmond able to hit a couple of three-pointers, get to the foul line, Brothers with 1.5 drained the triple to tie the game and send it to overtime where they scored 17 and dominated the Rams to win round one. The Shaka Smart is a quick learner. He's not going to allow himself or his team to be put in the same position. So in his mind, one minute to go with an eight-point lead is a lot of time for Richmond to catch up. Lead nine now. Theus, the senior, back on the floor for the final 107. Johnson will sit. Anthony inside the arc, way off on the shot. Weber the rebound. And the foul called on Brothers. Well, the only way Richmond can get back into this game is to force turnovers now and to make threes. And I think VCU is going to do a very good job of contesting every three-point shot. Third foul on Brothers. Weber back to the line. Sean Smart with instructions for his players for the final 54.3. Well, VCU a new addition to the Atlantic 10, but again, speaking to the coaches, they said they entered this league to win it and they wanted to make a statement in their first year and they've certainly done that. I mean St. Louis is having a fantastic year especially upon the death of Rick Majerus. But VCU is nipping at their heels very close in second place and it should make for a very interesting finish next, but certainly this weekend and into the Atlantic 10 tournament next week. Lindsay goes hard to the rim. He will go to the line. VCU has a tough game going on the road to play Temple. Temple's playing good basketball right now. They they went through a stretch where they struggled, but right now they've they've won a bunch in a row, and I think it'll be a good test for VCU to go on the road and try to beat Temple in the way of course center. An 11-0 VCU run. This game was tied at 79. Dejection for the Spiders. I don't think Richmond feels there's any consolation in playing good basketball for 38 minutes. I mean, they came into this building expecting to win the game and feeling confident enough in their abilities. Chris Mooney says he's very happy with the way his team has been playing. We talked about how they missed Derek Williams for nine games, and you know, they lost their share of some close games. But uh, they have a. A game coming up against Duquesne at the Robbins Center, which is going to be important for them, but he's actually quite happy with how his team has come along. You see coming up next, New Mexico and Nevada. Hang right with us, 45.2 left. Daniels to the line with two more triples tonight. 105 three-pointers on the year for VCU. 
Allen back in, Williams and Robbins to sit. Nelson to Dota. Back in the ball game as well. Daniels looking for point number nine. An 11 point lead for the Rams with 45.2 remaining. Daniel sits. Johnson back on the floor. Lindsay and air ball. Was it tipped? They'll discuss. It will stay with VCU. Well, you can see Theus came all the way out and defended Cedric Lindsay. Lindsay probably about 26 feet from the basket, giving the ultimate respect to Cedric Lindsay and the Spiders, their ability to make threes. Anthony steps back. Can't get that to go to the rebound to Theus. And Graham's foul. So Chris Mooney at this point is going to say, let's not fail. And with 11 point lead, BCU in control with 28 seconds to go. He had a good plan tonight, didn't he? I thought he had a terrific plan. He, he knew what to expect. As you mentioned, he practiced his offense against seven defenders. I thought they did a pretty good job of handling VCU's pressure. That didn't come into play. I think there were moments of time where Cedric Lindsay was out of the lineup because of his elbow. Darian Brothers with his ankle. That was a little disruptive. But on the whole, I think VCU did what it does best at offensive rebound. It took advantage of Reddick's size around the basket. It's athleticism. And Travion Graham did a terrific job of getting to the rim and scoring with drives to the basket. 21 for Graham is Lindsay. Adds two more. 22 on the night for him. You know, it's really fun to watch VCU, and it's certainly the success Butler's had. The crowd's awfully appreciative. This will be the last game here for VCU last season, and giving the seniors uh, a good send-off. They'll call a traveling violation on Darius Theus as he picked up the ball to hug Briante Weber, and he will step out of the game, the senior will, to a standing ovation at the Siegel Center and a hug from his coach. Well, a great way to finish your career here at home after so much success over the last four seasons. The fans here will have a lot to remember. And for Richmond, I think a good game. They'll be ready to go up against Duquesne on Saturday. And for VCU to go on the road and play Temple on Sunday. 93-82. VCU moves to 12 and 3. For John Griffin and our entire crew, I'm Brad Johansson. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to CBSSports.com. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Take out to Reno, Nevada. Andrew Catalan.